You're listening to the Weekend Sport Podcast with Jason Pine from Newstalk ZB. After five straight defeats, the Crusaders have chalked up their first win of the Super Rugby season. Good throw by Bradley Slater, who's onto the field, finds Tupo, and now the... Oh! Off, behind that! Johnny McNichol intercepts, shut the gate, he'll run 60 oh. metres to score his second in the night. What a dagger for the Chiefs, what a moment for the Crusaders and one of their favourite sons, Johnny McNichol. Oh my goodness, what a battle, both teams. Here's the hooter, Willie Hines, boots it, dead and goal, finally, it's taken six weeks, but the Crusaders are on the board. Oh, delighted the commentary box as well as around the ground, Crusaders 37. Chiefs 26, the Crusaders out to a 12-0 lead early on and 22-12 ahead at the break, back and forth in the second half. The Chiefs got with an eight late in the second period, but the Crusaders prevailed five tries to four with returning winger Johnny McNichol dotting down twice. You heard a second try there in commentary. A, uh, an intercept from Josh Ioane to streak away to score what proved to be a decisive try last night. Crusaders coach... Rob Penny joins us on Weekend Sport. Thanks for taking our call, Rob. How did you sleep last night, mate? Oh, look, I've been sleeping really well anyway. But yeah, it was there was a I guess there was a wee bit of a smile on the dial um, of yeah deep satisfaction. Really, what was different last night? Um, I think there was the boys were a bit brave in our attack, and we, we really um, uh, lacked a little. Well. I said confidence is such an important thing um, in our game, as you should be aware, and, and we've just lacked a little bit of confidence in our attack, but that, that sort of fell into place. Um, so, you know, Tamati and, and Jimmy are doing a great job with that, and um, it's just starting to bear a bit of fruit, which is awesome. And uh, I thought the first four minutes, the Chiefs had the ball and threw everything at us for, for over 20 phases, and... Matt Todd's defence really bore, bore um, some great fruit for us and we were able to just feed off that energy early on and um, and a little bit of belief grew and there we were. Got an outcome. Just on the attack part of it and the confidence you talked about there, Rob, when you haven't been bearing fruit from your attack, and I look at the last three games, 10 points against the Drua, 10 against the Hurricanes, 6 against the Blues, so the attack not functioning as I'm sure you would have hoped. How hard is it to continue to have confidence in your attack? Yeah, well, it's all, you know, like it, one feed, one issue feeds another, doesn't it? If you're going really well, that confidence feeds itself. You get into a into a really nice cycle of, we're doing well and motivation's high so we keep going and it's easy to grow your game. When it's going the other way, it turns into a bit of a vicious cycle and that's much more challenging. Um, but the coaching staff have done a fantastic job, mate. They're, they're really well connected with the with the group and uh, the conversations that are had are deep and purposeful and, um, you know, the boys, you know, for all the things that have been going wrong with us, have still held it. I, I think a really underlying the belief that we can turn it around at any moment, and um, it sort of came together last night. You know, we're not not by any means think we're the finished product, and we've got a lot of work to do. But you know, we've got to be consistent and try to replicate that time and time again. But at least it's a it's a good launching pad for us. The Chiefs kept coming, didn't they? Every time you scored a try, they seemed to hit back with one. Any any nerves in the coaching box in the second half? Yeah, no, there was lots. Um, but you just got to trust that the boys have got it under control. I thought um, Tom Christie was awesome as captain and keeping a lid on the anxiousness and those moments where we were under the pump. And the Chiefs are a great side and they can score from anywhere. I was having a chat to Clayton last night about how dangerous a team he's got there. And to credit to that organisation and how capable they are and the coaching staff up there. But yep, we, we were nervous at times. But as I said, you know, some of our younger leaders really took hold of it and um, yeah, we ended up finishing over the top, which was which was wonderful. You talk about Tom Christie and you're right what a what a magnificent game from him, but he wasn't even supposed to be captain, was he? You lost Mitch Drummond before the start of the game with illness. He was going to captain the side. Were you starting to wonder who you'd annoyed among the rugby <laughs> gods to lose another one? <laughs> the, the boys, there was a bit of banter um, Scooter and Dave Harvelli was saying you don't actually want to get the captain's armband because it's a 
It's a curse. <laughs> it's a curse, mate, yeah, just at the moment. Um, you know, you think about the consistency of leadership and captaincy in particular with the Crusaders over the last seven or so years, you know, and um, and then all of a sudden and, and it's, that's our, obviously our sixth game and we've had three or four different captains. So, yeah, that side of it's been a bit frustrating, but admire the men. You know, they're they just so committed and they want to, they want to do well and they just back each other up. You've asked seven players to start all six matches. I, I know you've had hu- huge problems with injuries, but you've asked seven guys to start all six matches. That's more than any other New Zealand side, Rob. Uh, how much of a toll does that take on guys who are backing up week after week after week? Yeah, for some of them, it's, they've had a massive workload and some of them have had 80-minute performances all the way through. And you look, think traditionally around front rows in particular, um, you know, normally they are sort of 50, 60 minute. You change them over. George Bell, um, young man that's come in. I think he had had 30 minutes of super before this year. Um, and I think he's had three 80 minute, three 80 minute efforts, uh, this campaign already. Uh, look, we've got some, we've got a bit of depth coming back, um, in that position. So it's highly likely that, you know, he'll be able to get rostered and rotated. And there's a few other boys similarly, but, um, admire, their commitment to turn up and particularly on short short turnarounds where you'd like to be able to manage your roster a little more efficiently and give people less time but they've just they've just pulled their socks up and got in and no one's balked at it no one's complained they've just said this is what it is let's go and um it's it's so inspiring these young men it's it's wonderful to see and I believe the cavalry is returning. Uh, Tamati Williams, Ethan Black out of Fergus Burke. Can you update us on their potential returns, Rob? Yeah, well, we're, we're very hopeful Ethan and Fergus and Christian Leo Willie will be able to join us on our Australian trip. And then when we come home, Tamati and Scott Barrett hopefully will join us. Uh, and Zach Gallagher, um, Finley Brewis are very close as well. So... We've got some cattle coming back here. Good to hear. Johnny Mintnickel went all right last night. How long is he hanging oh. around for? <laughs> well, we've got our hooks in. So. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, I bet. Yeah. And he, look, look he, he was looking to come home, and he's so pleased to be home. I saw his young family yesterday, beautiful couple of daughters, because uh, he's been away for their, you know, for their births and, and, and that duration, but they're back with their in-laws and, and parents and so they've, they've settled back home very quickly and you could just see how he expressed himself and his maturity and experience was invaluable to us. And it really, I think one of the biggest benefits, although Johnny played magnificently himself, was the impact that he had with Shafi Haki at the back, just giving him some confidence and a surety with, with his communication and his organisation back there, which is wonderful for his growth and development too. So, no, he's a gem. Johnny McNichol, we love him. How challenging have the last six weeks been? Oh, without doubt, there's been a number of challenges, but, um, you know, it's not easy when you go from a, a team that's won seven in a row to um, losing five on the trot. Uh, you know, anyone would obviously feel as though and start searching for for uh, remedies to fix that um, beyond where they actually lie, probably. Um, but in saying that, I just can't speak highly enough of the higher management and the board. Um, so well connected. They're across everything. Um, there's been not a not a voice of dissent or raised eyebrow or subtle body language hints that someone's really unhappy with the way things are, are, at, uh, are heading. Um, of course, the results were disappointing and that caused frustration and that caused a lot of um, I guess not anxiety so much because that wasn't wasn't evident but you know people ask you know questions but it was obvious from the get-go and as we moved into those successive losses we were just getting tighter in the organization it's such a credit to the management and as I reflected last night, you know, the back office staff and everyone in the marketing department and the commercial department, they're just every day turn out, right, next week, boys, come on, next week. And it's just so inspiring because 
you know they're hurting too and it's difficult for them when the organisation's not functioning well at the front and it's the flagship um, but it was yeah it wasn't easy mate don't get me wrong it wasn't easy but um, hopefully we've, we've, we're over that little hump or massive hump and um, you know we can get a, a get a run of games and put ourselves in contention for that top eight and who knows from there Did you at any stage begin to privately wonder if you were the right man for the job? No, never. And um, uh, um, I, I had, I, I've got deep faith in the way in which I, I was managing the group. Um, I've got great support. The coaching staff uh, are going to be awesome for a long, long time. And, um, you know, we were all completely um, devoted to fixing it and the outcome was going to be achieved one way or another and it yeah, started last night. Good on you, mate. How good was the crowd last night? Oh, mate, they, they had every reason not to come. 17,500 screaming Crusader fans there last night. It was inspirational again, like um, almost brought a tear to the eye at the end of the game with the, the reaction of the crowd. And it's been that way. We've only had two home games, and it's for the both of them. It's been that way, and just a, just amazing. Uh, credit to the to the diehard supporters that love this team, and uh, you know the energy that, that they provided in the later parts of that game for the boys to get over the line can't be underestimated. Did you get a beer in last night? Sometime later in the evening, I had one. <laughs> <laughs> And it was sweet. I bet it was. I bet it tasted (laughs) lovely. (laughs) It did. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Brilliant, Rob. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, I know a lot of Crusaders fans, and in fact, I think a lot of rugby fans were were, uh, were really impressed with what they saw last night. As you know, around the country, um, you know, we all uh, envy what's happening in Crusaders country over over many many years. But um, I think many of us really enjoyed what happened last night. Congratulations, mate. Thanks for chatting to us. Pleasure. Thanks for your time, Polly. No, thank you, Rob. Rob Penny. Your chance to react, and not just you and. Christchurch, anywhere really. I know the Christchurch faithful will want to uh, get on board. 0800 80 10 80. Uh, Crusaders 1 and 5 now. 1 win, 5 losses. It's amazing though how much that 1 means. Depending on who you believe, the Crusaders are now going to win the whole thing or this was a flash in the pan. The answer is probably somewhere in between those two things, isn't it? Crusaders fans, good for you. Good on you. As Rob Penny said, you had every reason not to come last night. But as one of your staunchest fans, Graham, told us on the show last weekend, this is the time you need to show up. And you did. Terrific game of rugby. Really enjoyed it. For those without any skin in the game, those who weren't cheering for the Crusaders or the Chiefs, I think it was a really enjoyable game of rugby. thought the Chiefs were actually pretty good. Very good for large parts of the game. In fact, I thought they were better in the second half. The better of the two teams, I mean. And still, I still have the Chiefs as super rugby favourites, despite last night. But back to the Crusaders. Let's not forget, the Cavalry will return over the next few weeks, as you heard Rob Penny say. Ethan Blackadder, Fergus Burke, Christian Leo Willey. They'll go to Australia for a two-game stretch over there. Tamaiti Williams, Scott Barrett, Zach Gallagher, probably Brodie McAllister. They'll be back when the team arrives back in New Zealand. The Crusaders have the bye now, and then they play four Australian sides in a row. Waratahs away, Force away. The Waratahs and the Force have, between them, won two games all season. The Rebels at home, the Reds at home. I bet you anything you like, anything at all, that in six weeks or so, the Crusaders will be 5-5. Five and five. From 0-5, they will be 5-5. Five and five. They'll be secure in the top eight, and when those knockout matches come around, there is one thing that we have all learned from years of experience. In knockout matches, the Crusaders usually win. (laughs) You can bet on red and black. For more from Weekend Sport with Jason Pine, listen live to Newstalk ZB weekends from midday or follow the podcast on iHeartRadio.